Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, G, and we're here for a review of The Sims Sparked. Now, if you're watching this, as I always say, I'm going to expect that you either know the spoilers or you don't care about the spoilers. But anyway, let's have some fun. So, what did you think about episode three? I thought it was really dramatic, but not for the reasons that I was expecting. So, this time they decided to change up the format on us, and The Sims actually went the Sims? They've become the Sims. No, the Simmers went head to head rather than competing against each other as a team, team versus team. So basically, whoever was the stylist was against the stylist, whoever was a builder was against the builder of the opposite team, and it just kind of made things a bit fresh. But that's not why it was dramatic. The big shock from the whole episode was the fact that one of the team member finalists actually walked out and quit the show, which was not, I don't know if it was hinted at, but I didn't see it coming. So, and if, yeah, we're going to get into it. Oh, there's so much to say. I'm getting too ahead of myself and excited. Let's just quickly recap and we'll get there in a minute. So the last two teams that were in the final was Team Llama, which was Dr. Gluon, X Mirror Mirror and Simlacy. And then they were up against Team Cowplant, which was Stefo Sims, Dr. Ashley and Little Seeha. Like I said, they were going to be head to head against each other. So they kept the same jobs as they have had the whole way through which, to be honest, is a bit boring. I wish I could have seen them mix it up, but anyway, one of many points to consider. But basically, they had to go against the opposition in three special tasks, which I actually really liked. But let's talk about the first one, which was stylists. So the stylist head-to-head -head had X Mirror Mirror, who is always going to be amazing, let's be honest. This is kind of her thing. And she was up against Little Seeha, and they had to create their own fashion line. So the task was called gender not required and I'm gonna be honest <laughs> I'm a bit disappointed it has such a like obvious like it's easily explained task gender not required you're going to be looking for something gender fluid or just representing a whole spectrum of different genders and identities but I just felt that both parties really could have focused a little bit more on that like they just heard the fashion bit and then in my opinion they just kind of left it there but basically, the guys had to come up with sim models, and they all had to have a different look, size, and kind of like body shape, I mean by that, different colours, um, ages, you know, everything about them, try and show a representation of different people, basically, with their models. And diversity and gender representation was kind of the key message here, but they kind of lift them to half of it and not the other half. 45 minutes was the time that they got given. And I mean, that's not very much time at all, is it? And on top of that, they were both the only two people left in the studio. The rest of the team were taken away and they watched externally with the judges. The ex Mirrors clip started really positively. She was talking about how good she thought she was going to do and how she wasn't worried about her performance, which is great. We love a queen who can, you know, represent herself. And she's certainly one of those. But then she went straight into trashing glue on. Come on, Mirror, we don't need to keep bringing him up it was all about you and then you had to drag him into it it just it just felt like a cheap shot she was basically just saying that she was worried about his storytelling because that had let them down in the past it's like come on let's focus on you but yeah overall there was a really cute little moment where um I think it was maybe Ravon or one of the judges basically were asking how they thought their teammates were going to do and both teams were so supportive just kind of showing us how much love there is in the Sims community that so getting on to the actual how did they do I loved this challenge this is completely up my street I mean if you've seen any of the other videos on my channel I do drag makeovers so I love putting guys in makeup and like androgynous looks and so I was really disappointed that there was very little actual like gender fluidity on show I mean both teams use she he pronouns for every single one of the models it would have been nice to have a sim who maybe didn't like the use of those pronouns, just to show that there are obviously lots of different types of people in this world, and not all of them are happy to be labelled as male or female. I get that some people might be like, whoa, like you don't have to keep going on about that, but this was what the challenge was specifically talking about. Like If there was ever a moment to have a person who doesn't fit the kind of gender norms that society puts on this, it was now, and they, they missed that. But I think they fell short. Um, but yeah, sorry, I'm kind of going off on one, but it's just because I love obviously the ability to cross dress in The Sims, like I said, for the videos I do for the drag. And I actually really liked that The Sims were showing off how well it does. 
I've ranted in my other videos before, you know, CC creators, please, please, please make some clothing that works on both genders. Don't just only do female stuff and only do male stuff. And this is what Maxis does. And I don't think people give them enough credit that they, they, you can have a sim and dress it in whatever clothing he or she or they might want to wear. So yeah, um, massive love for this challenge if you hadn't noticed, but I'm going to stop gushing about it and move on. So Mary's collection was called the Chill Collection and it had a blue theme throughout. So you could see just from afar before even looking at the outfits that she had a cohesive idea of what she wanted to do. They kind of covered a multitude of different occasions. She had some swimwear, you know, some PJs, that kind of thing. All of her models she chose were adults. And whilst I will say there was definitely a guy wearing like a cute little crop top and like some makeup on, I, like I said, would have liked to have seen a bit more when it came to this gender not required idea that the, the whole challenge was about. I liked that her outfits weren't too over the top because you know, you could have taken it so obvious and so far, like put a guy in a massive ball gown and been like, da da, this is what you wanted. Like she didn't. She did it nicely and respectfully and naturally and not trying to try it too hard. So, you know, she didn't make it a joke and I, I really liked her her work. Little see her, she had a collection that she called the Suzanne collection, and that was after her grandma, because she said her grandmother's fashion was kind of what inspired her. And she also said that she was inspired by Harry Styles. So I guess in her mind, he kind of dresses a little bit flamboyantly for a guy with lots of floaty shirts. And she thinks she's talking about, you know, great textures that he wears and flower prints and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, cool, I guess. She picked one main focal point per outfit, she kept saying. But I mean, from what I can see, they were all quite out there. And yeah, lots of big florals on every single one of her outfits. But she did have an elder model which was something that ex Mira didn't do. So it was nice to show different ages. You know, you don't just have to be a young adult to, <laughs> to have a good taste in clothes. So yeah, like I said, both teams were focused more on the styling rather than the gender fluid, gender not necessary kind of nature of it. And and they kind of pulled out the little see how could have done more to represent different body types because she didn't really do that either. The next challenge, again, was a really, really cool one. I would be stumped. I don't know about you guys. If somebody asked me to do this, I would be like, oh, no, 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 backing out. Basically, the two builders were Simlessy and Dr. Ashley, and they had to come up with an unconventional build for an unconventional mode of transport. Like, what on earth does that even mean? I just felt my heart just, like, drop for them when they said that. I was like, what even is that? Who does that in The Sims? Like, I mean, I'm sure there's crazy people that do, but not me. So they had 45 minutes and then they had to create this crazy mode of transport and they couldn't use any actual correct items from any of the, the catalogs. So, for example, if they had to make a plane, they couldn't use like the actual like crashed plane wings to do it. You know, they had to find something that looked similar and just kind of use their imagination to build something. So it was really tricky. Wow. Just what a challenge. Simlessies was kind of quite hard to decipher. It took me a while to work out what she was doing, but it turned out that she was making a school bus that had been renovated to become a camper van. So as you kind of watched it, it's kind of obvious, wasn't it, that she'd misinterpreted the challenge. In her head, it was like, take a conventional piece of transport and make it unconventional, rather than the challenge being, show us unconventional transport. Then Dr. Ashley's was a bit easier to work out, although to be honest, I did think she was making a rocket ship to start with. But when she was presenting it to us, she showed us that it was a time machine that was kind of traveling through time. And that concept was amazing and definitely unconventional. I mean, it didn't even enter my head to even think about that. Whilst building, both of them were obviously head to head in the room together. There was this really odd clip that I just don't get why the SimSpark team did it. Basically, the judges were talking and noticed that Simlessy was making like this amazing interior design of the inside of her like school bus and she was spending a lot of time making it look like a home and doing interiors and obviously they wanted her to focus on the transport so I guess maybe they were thinking she'd misunderstood the challenge but then Taylor the judge was like oh I'm going to go in there and kind of like nudge her in the right direction I don't know what do you guys think do you think that was fair because we've had people in the previous um not just even this episode but previous episodes where people you know maybe haven't quite done exactly was asked or they could have been stronger if they'd understood the question a bit more. But like the judges didn't go and interfere and help them. I it didn't really sit right with me. Like obviously it's unfortunate if she didn't quite get it, but at the same time, you know, how are you gonna even that up then? It's not like they helped Dr. Ashley. 
So basically, if you haven't watched it, Taylor then went in and basically hinted heavily, heavily that she needed to relook at the outside of her build and not spend so much time decorating. I just think it was so obvious that they were doing it so they could set up drama later on in the episode when they were really close, because obviously if she'd have carried on and not done any of the outside properly, then it would have been an easy give, like, oh, well, obviously Dr. Ashley won. I just, yeah, it didn't sit right with me. It was a bit meh. I don't want them to be, like, fighting to the death, but there used to be some competition. Come on, they can't all win. So the feedback from the judges, briefly, I won't go into too much detail, but Dr. Ashley, Kelsey said every single piece that she'd put in her build had a place and it had a reason. And then Ninja had said she was incredibly creative and she really went above and beyond. And Taylor agreed that her idea was very unconventional when it came to transportation. And then for Simlessy, Ninja did call her out and say she made a bad choice to focus on this kind of hippie interior rather than thinking about the transport bit, which is obviously the outside. He said she needed to focus more on the vehicle. And Kelsey said that she used the items really, really well. And she did use unconventional items to make things like the wheels and the front of the bus. But it's just the actual item, um, the actual mode of transportation wasn't unconventional. And then, guys, there was this really awkward bit where we clip to, like, Rayvon. And he's like, wow, what a hard decision the judges are going to have to make. And you're just like, really? Like, <laughs> have you been watching the same thing we've just seen? Like, I love Simlessly, but she obviously didn't understand the challenge properly or she took it in a different way. Like, there was no competition. She was up against a time travel build. Like, <laughs> come on. And then this is where the actual drama kicked off. So... The storyteller challenge. They all slept. They came back for the next day to do the last challenge. And we get the announcement that Stefo Sims decided to leave the show. So the reasons that we were given, and we were given this from herself as well. She did an interview in the episode. Was that because her friends, English Simmer and Plumbella, had left. Um, she didn't really want to continue. And she, in fact, said that she didn't actually know how to continue. She said that they'd come there together and, you know, obviously affected her very deeply when both of her friends were eliminated from the competition. Personally, I just felt bad. I felt bad for her, but I also felt bad for everybody. I don't think there's any winners in this situation when she left. Firstly, I think that whoever cast the show really needed to do more of a thorough job examining the contestants. Like, one, their state of minds before they come in. And two, their reasons for appearing on the show in the first place. It's such a shame that Steffo had to leave, but it does make me wonder, is that actually the real reason? Because if the real reason was because her friends had left, she didn't want to continue without them. It suggests that maybe the competition wasn't really why she was there. I don't want to say that it's a free holiday with her friends, but a lot of people would have seen the competition as an opportunity to showcase your own talent and grow your fan base and work with a wider team, get, get to know new creators which so many people would have loved and they would have stayed on for however mental health is a tricky thing me you I'm sure most of the people that we know and we love have all suffered from it and it works in mysterious ways so if she didn't want to continue we don't know what the real reason was and it's absolutely critical that she left when she did if that's how she felt but I do think all I'm saying is it's ironic that she left and then one of the friends that she wanted to leave because they weren't there anymore, came back and replaced her. I just wonder what happens, actually. If English Simmer is in the winning team, will they share the prize money with Steffo? I guess so. That would be a nice thing to do. So we moved on with a storyteller challenge, which involved English Simmer and Dr. Gluon. So English Simmer being the replacement. This was odd. And I've already seen people in the comments section talking about this challenge, and it became more of a weird sales task. So the task was they both had to act as an estate agent reacting to a house they've never seen before as if they're walking through it with the judges and they're trying to sell it to the judges. Simgu Ninja is the one moving around from room to room. So the guys that just have to stand there at the side looking at this video and kind of live narrating it, reacting as they walk through rooms and they were presented by horrible, hilarious Sim surprises in every room. So stuff like ghosts popping out and rats running around there was trash everywhere and there were fires and you know the plumbing was broken and it was just crazy but yeah I agree with everyone what I could see on Twitter and underneath the video being like this is not a sims task this is not a story what kind of story can you tell like 
you it's like when you have an interview for a job, everyone's like, oh, sell me this fountain pen. You know, it's, it's really, really, really odd. <laughs> and I enjoyed watching it, but it wasn't a storytelling task, let me tell you. So Doc Gluon went first, and Gluon was really, really funny, and he took everything they threw at him in his stride. I liked the, even when all the weird stuff was happening, like a skeleton was suddenly there, or when there was like a, a homeless person had moved in, or, you know, he just did not look surprised. He just kind of accepted it and went with it and, and thought of something funny so he kept it flowing he had a lot of jokes throughout like he called it like open concept piping when there was just like broken pipes everywhere and he said the rats wouldn't mean you were never alone you know those kind of like funny quirky little quips and um kelsey definitely highlighted that being a twitch streamer he should have been good at reacting and improvising so yeah i think it's fair enough and he definitely showed us that he knew how to do that Taylor said he ran with every punch, so I think she meant he rolled with the punches, but same thing. And she found him funny. And Ninja said that he had very high expectations of Gluon from the start because of it being so perfect for his day job. So then next we had English Summer. So she wasn't as flowy. It kind of, or at least it's hard to tell. Like we say every single episode, we don't know what it's like because of the cutting that they do, the edits. We, we don't know, but it seemed to be less less natural to her. And she didn't have quite as many jokes as Blue One, but she was still making jokes as they went through and had a lot of laughs. She was talking about, about there being free pets. The homeless man, she said, was the previous owner and he wouldn't be there anymore. Don't worry, that kind of thing. She said because of the um, because of all the running water that was dripping everywhere, you know, you can shower in every room. And she made a really good joke about all the weird mold and things that were growing in the kitchen. And she said it was, you know, fresh food on hand. So, yeah, she did her best and she did really well, considering that they've never seen anything like this before. But it's just it was more obvious. And particularly because of the way it was edited, we could see that there was a few pauses and stops and stutters as she was thinking things through. Ninja said that she did a pretty good job. And he is like Simon Cowell when he says pretty good job. You know, he's emphasizing the pretty. And it's just like, oh, ouch. But he did highlight as well that she started a little bit so I think his judging was quite fair Kelsey <laughs> said she didn't think she was quite as funny as glue on but she liked her overall yeah these judges man I wouldn't want them to be like my teachers or something they're so brutal and then Taylor said she thought that English Simmers was a bit more realistic in terms of like speaking like an estate agent which was fair I think as well in terms of judging then they went through all of the three different head-to-head -head battles that they had and lo and behold, it got all the way to the last stage and it was down to Kelsey, the last person to cast the deciding vote. She voted for Team Llama, which means that Gluon, Simlacy and Ex Mirror Mirror, they all win. And I thought it was going to be something really cool. But no, no, no. They win 15 minutes advantage. Yeah. They won 15 minutes advantage to work on the final challenge, which is in episode four. I mean, I feel let down. I don't know about you. What was the point of this whole episode just for them to get 15 minutes? Sure, you can do a lot in 15 minutes. I'm not denying that. But I mean, come on. Well, let's hope that it does it because at the moment it feels like they're going in there pretty much even with their guys on the other team to win potentially that share of 100k. I would be a bit better if I were them. But yes, I personally would have liked it if they'd kicked out the losing team harsh I know but bear with me and then the final episode four would have had the three simmers from team llama go head to head against all of each other across all three skills to make just one winner at the end what do you guys think would you like that or am I just a bit delusional maybe I just want more fighting and more drama I don't know but yes that was the end of that episode and here are my closing thoughts I feel like this episode would have been really slow and dull if there hadn't been the Stefo Sims announcement in it I loved that we got to see a lot more of the building work and the thought process behind it, the presentations. It feels like we almost saw the whole presentation by now because there's so much little else in the episode. But yeah, it was a bit meh. I mean, apart from the little chat, um, what do you call them? The moments where the Sims talk to camera by themselves. I've completely forgotten the name. Apart from those moments, Whenever the Sims, Simmers are talking, they're always quite like flat and a bit dull and they don't sound that excited. I think it's just because they're nervous. But you know, if someone's talking like that all the time, you're just like, oh, come on. Is this not exciting? Personally, as I said last time, I would have liked them to mix up the groups a bit more so people can shine in different roles. I would love to have seen them just what else can they do apart from that one job they've been given? 
I quite liked that the Simmers are down to earth. Like, I know I was just saying that they were kind of boring, but it's quite good that they're chilled and there's no big headed people. No one's kind of like psyching out the competition. It's reasonably friendly and polite, which, you know, I like that. I don't want anyone to be horrible. But um, the main thing, I guess, is I would have liked more of those moments, but in kind of more casual settings. So it would have been cool, in my opinion, to see the teams like chatting together in like the lunchroom or because whenever we see them on camera, not only are they dull, but I think it's because they're nervous because the judges or whoever is talking to them. I'd love to get like a behind the scenes moment of them all just chilling out and, and playing, to, not necessarily playing together, but just like, I don't know, in a canteen, just chatting or, you know, a bit of banter between them. It feels like whenever we see these guys, they're always like on edge because they're like on and like they need to be ready and the judges are going to ask them something and they're nervous and no, maybe I just, I'm just comparing it to too many other reality programs. But like the other reality programs, I do think this in Spark Blacks where they don't emphasize the kind of, I say characters, but I mean the contestants. So if you look at Love Island, which is big in the UK, and I think a few other places too, or Big Brother, or The Apprentice, or Married at First Sight, or you know any of those kind of things, RuPaul's Drag Race, so much of the emphasis is on the contestants themselves. In The Sims Spark, the emphasis is on the game itself. It's not compelling. I'm sorry. If you took any of those other reality shows and took the attention away from the people and put it onto the task that they were being set, they would all be boring as hell, if I'm frank. I would like them to have made more of the characters or the people that were, were part of this series, more getting to know them and care about them. You want to root for them. The only reason we're rooting for them is because we've been watching them on YouTube for years. So I think the Sims Sparks kind of got away with that. They almost know that. They're like, well, you know, they've got ready-made fan bases. We don't need to have to work to win people over to them. But I just think it means you're less engaged in the show. You care less about the success of it because they're too busy trying to flog the Sims product rather than making you care about the people who are in it. I'm enjoying it to a degree, but there's a lot I think we need to change for next um, next series. But there's only one episode to go. So hopefully you will join me and come back and we can review that one. And until then, I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.